Welcome to a video on first partial derivatives. Let's start with a quick review. The first derivative of a function of one variable tells us the slope of the tangent line at a given point. This is the rate of change of y with respect to x. The first partial derivative of a function of two variables tells us the slope of the tangent line at a given point in either the x direction or y direction. Therefore, the partial derivative measures the rate of change of z with respect to x or the rate of change of z with respect to y. Here we see the limit definitions of the partial derivatives with respect to x here and with respect to y here, but we're not going to determine partial derivatives in this video in this way. In this video, to determine the partial derivative of f with respect to x, as we see here, we'll consider y a constant and differentiate with respect to x. And to find the partial derivative of f with respect to y, we'll consider x a constant and differentiate with respect to y. Before we do that, let's go and take a look at some different notation for partial derivatives. All of these notations here represent partial derivatives of f with respect to x or with respect to y. And one that I left off here is the partial of f instead of the partial of z with respect to x and the partial of f with respect to y. And if we want to evaluate these at a specific point, we can use the notation as we see here down below. Let's go ahead and take a look at some examples and then look at the results geometrically. Here we want to determine the partial derivative with respect to x and y at the point one, two. So to find the partial derivative of f with respect to x, we're going to differentiate with respect to x, treating y as a constant. So the derivative of x squared would be two x, Derivative of y squared would be zero because we're treating as a constant. Derivative of four is zero. Now we'll go and evaluate this partial derivative at the point one, two. Well, this only requires the value of x, so we'll have two times one. That'll give us a value of two. At the point one, two, the slope of the tangent line in the x direction is equal to two. Now the partial of f with respect to y so now we'll differentiate with respect to y and treat x as a constant. So that derivative would be zero. This will be negative two y, and this would be zero. So if we evaluate this at the point one, two, y is two, this would be negative four. The slope of the tangent line at this point in the y direction should be negative four. Let's take a look at that graphically. What we're seeing here is the surface in blue and the tangent line in black and the point of tangency in red. And if I angle this correctly, notice as we move out along the positive x-axis, the line is moving up, and that slope in the x-direction would be positive two. Now let's take a look at the slope of the tangent line in the y-direction. Notice now as we move right, Along the positive y-axis, the line is moving downward, and the slope of that line in the y-direction is negative four. So this is a nice illustration of what we're determining when we find partial derivatives. Let's go and take a look at another example. Now notice in this function, the first thing we can do is simplify this and then apply a property of logarithms to help finding these partial derivatives a little bit easier. What I mean by that is this is the same as natural log of x, y to the power of one half. And then what we can do is take advantage of the power property of logs and move this to the position of the coefficient. So we're gonna use the function f of x, y is equal to one half natural log x, y. One more thing we should remember, the derivative of natural log u is equal to one over u times u prime. Okay, let's go ahead and find the partial derivative with respect to x. So we're gonna have one half times one over u times u prime. So one over x, y. Now u prime, we'll find the derivative with respect to x treating y as a constant. The derivative of x is one, so we'll have one times y or just y. This y and this y simplify out. So the partial with respect to x is just one over two x. So if we evaluate this at the point two, two, of course x is two, so we'll have one fourth. 
Now let's determine the partial with respect to y. It's going to be a similar process. We'll have one half times one over u, one over x, y, times u prime. But now we're treating x as a constant and differentiating with respect to y. So we'll have x times one, or just x. So now the x's simplify out, and we're left with one over two y. So at the point two, two, we're going to have one over two times two, or one fourth. So the slope in the x direction and the y direction are the same at the point two, two. Let's look at this one graphically as well. We said the slope in the x and y direction would be positive one fourth. If we look at this along the positive x axis, you can see it's moving up from left to right gradually at that point. This model is the partial derivative with respect to x. And here's the model of the partial derivative with respect to y. Here's the positive y axis. If we angle this correctly, if you move along the positive y axis, that tangent line is moving upward with a slope of one fourth. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more. Here we want to find the partial derivatives with respect to x and y, and then evaluate them at the point two, negative one. This is going to require the quotient rule. Let's start by determining the partial derivative with respect to x. So our denominator is going to be x plus y squared. And then we're going to have the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. So we'll have x plus y. Remember, we're treating y as a constant. So the derivative of x, y would just be one times y or y. Minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator with respect to x, treating y as a constant. So this would be one, derivative of y would be zero. Let's go ahead and simplify this. If we distribute here, we're going to have xy plus y squared, and then minus xy. So the xy terms are opposites. We're going to have y squared all over x plus y to the second. Let's go ahead and evaluate this at the point two, negative one. So our numerator is going to be one. The denominator will be x plus y. That's going to be one squared, that's one. I didn't leave enough room, so I'll try to squeeze it in down here. The partial derivative with respect to y is going to be the derivative of this with respect to y, treating x as a constant. So we'll have x plus y squared, applying the quotient rule. Then we'll have x plus y times the derivative of xy, treating x as a constant. So it'll be x times the derivative of y would be one. So we'll have x minus xy, the numerator, times the derivative of the denominator, treating x as a constant, that'd be zero, and that would be one. When we distribute here, we're gonna have x squared plus xy minus xy. So those two terms are opposites. We're left with x squared over the quantity x plus y squared. And now we need to evaluate this at the point two, negative one. So our denominator is gonna be x plus y squared. It's gonna be one squared or one. Our numerator is going to be x squared. Two squared is four. So this tells us at the point two, negative one, the slope of the tangent line in the x direction should be positive one, and the slope in the y direction should be positive four. Let's try one more. Here we want the partial derivatives with respect to x and y. We have f of x, y equals sine x squared plus y squared. So x squared plus y squared is u. So the partial derivative with respect to x, well, the derivative of sine u is cosine u, so we'll have cosine of x squared plus y squared times u prime. So the derivative of x squared would be two x. Derivative of y squared would be zero because we're treating it like a constant. So our partial derivative with respect to x is just two x cosine x squared plus y squared. Now let's find the partial with respect to y. It's gonna be cosine u times u prime again. But now u prime, derivative with respect to y, this would be zero, and this would be two y. And that's all we have time for in this video. I hope you found these examples helpful.